I literally just put Amelia down exactly when my phone said to and she went right to sleep within like two minutes. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for joining. If you're already subscribed, thank you so, so much. Today I'm going to be making a video that I have had requested to me quite a few times but I never got around to it and so today I am sharing my top tips for first time moms. So after almost 20 months of going through motherhood and this whole crazy journey, I finally have narrowed down to three big tips that I have for any new mamas out there or expecting mamas and I'm excited to share it with you today. Today's video is also sponsored by Huckleberry, which I'm super excited about. If you guys have been following me for a long time, you know that I have been using the Huckleberry app since Amelia was like six weeks old and I still use it today. So I'm super excited to share all about the app in this video. But first I'm gonna be sharing a few of my top tips for new mamas. So get ready because this is the advice that I give a mom if I meet her for the first time and she says she's expecting or if uh, somebody I know lets me know that they are expecting for their first baby. These are the type of things that I share because it's things that I wish I knew before I started on this journey. So I feel like it's kind of like my duty to new mamas to share my experience and also be there for them. So that's what this video is all about. So let's get started on the advice. So my first piece of advice is to actually build your postpartum team before you have your baby. So I know that a lot of moms, when you're expecting, you do all the things like you create your registry and you buy all the stuff you think you're gonna need, you do the nursery, you have a baby shower, you go to birthing classes, and all of this is important, but all of this is more focused on the baby and not on the mom. And I find that in the US especially, there's such a lack of postpartum care that it's up to the moms to really know and understand that this is something that's important that you're gonna have to be ready to deal with head on after your baby comes. I'm like tearing up because this is something I'm extremely passionate about. And so I'm really excited to talk to you about this. So my biggest advice is go through and think like all the resources that you may need after you have the baby, line it up before you have your baby. So if you're watching this and you already have your baby, it's not too late. You can still find these resources and get the benefit of using them. But if you're expecting, I definitely recommend to look up a lactation consultant, look up a therapist, look up um, your local Le Leche League, if you're breastfeeding or if you're not sure if you're gonna breastfeed or not, I think it's important to find all of the resources that you can before the baby comes so you have the phone numbers, you know who it is, and especially for a therapist. For me, I did not expect that I was going to suffer from postpartum depression. I'm a very happy person and I just didn't expect it at all. And so it was difficult for me because I was dealing with the depression, but I had to call around to find a therapist that was taking new clients, that was could take my insurance, and that I could see as soon as possible. And that was stressful for me because that was not the thing that I wanted on my mind at the moment. I had a newborn, she was around three months actually, but I had a new baby to take care of. I was trying to take care of myself, I was feeling isolated, lonely, confused, scared. And the last thing I wanted to do was look up whether my insurance took XYZ therapist. So even if you don't expect to be having postpartum depression, even if you don't have postpartum depression, I think it's still good to have a therapist in your postpartum team because the transition to motherhood is like nothing I've ever experienced in my life. It is a complete 180 of your life and it's amazing i love motherhood i wouldn't be this excited about it if i didn't love it but i absolutely love it but it is a challenge it's a huge challenge it's mentally and emotionally exhausting and it's just good to have a professional to talk to on your postpartum team so those are kind of my recommendations for when the baby's coming prepare for your postpartum care before the baby comes 
Tip number two is to buy secondhand so that you can save money and have money to buy things that you actually need to buy firsthand. So for me, I utilized Facebook a lot and I have used the marketplace when I just want to search for something that I know I want and just find it for cheap or I've used the local mom group it has been a lifesaver so for example this past summer I wanted summer clothes for my daughter and she just went to 18 months so I didn't have any clothes for her so I just put in my local mom group hey I'm looking for 18 months summer clothes for a girl if anybody has some please let me know two people gave me huge bags of clothes and those clothes were pretty much brand new some of them still had the tags on and they were free so you definitely should look for things secondhand if you can i know if you're like if you're anything like me and you're watching this and your baby is in your belly you're gonna be like no i want everything new this is my baby they deserve it and that's how i felt and now i see that i was just kind of dumb because now that i have the baby and i can see that secondhand is not bad the only things I would recommend to buy like firsthand is a crib and a car seat. I think those are the main things and then like bottles and um, pacifiers and things that go in a baby's mouth. Other than that, clothes, toys, books, um, wagons, strollers, you name it. You can find it on Facebook Marketplace or just ask friends if they have stuff that they're not using and getting rid of and save money like that. So now my third tip is to use the Huckleberry app to track all things baby. And let me tell you guys, I have been using this app, like I said, since Amelia was six weeks old. So this video is sponsored by Huckleberry. Again, I'm very excited about it because this is something that I have been using and loving for so, so long. So I have a lot of personal experience to share as well. So I will share my experience and talk about the app and then I'll show you guys on screen what it looks like and just talk about some of the features that I use the most. So if you don't know, Huckleberry is a easy baby tracking app. So you can track their feeds, their bottles, like breastfeeding bottles, um, the food they eat, like solids, you can track their diapers, you can track medication, their growth, their temperature, and most importantly, sleep. So I used Huckleberry since she was like six weeks old and I still use it today for sleep. So I tracked all her diapers and everything up until I think 12 or 14 months is when I started to not track the diapers and not track the breastfeeding as much. I used to use the timer every time she would nurse on each side. So I pretty much tracked every little detail of her life until I think t between 12 and 14 months, I finally started to let go of every detail, but I kept sleep because sleep is the most important thing. And with Huckleberry, you can track when to put your baby to sleep so that's what i really want to talk about in this video it's a feature called sweet spot and so this is what got me hooked from the beginning so i have a vlog where i actually filmed the first time we used huckleberry sweet spot and we called it witchcraft we were so shocked that it worked um so my husband we did not believe it was gonna work and I literally just put Amelia down exactly when my phone said to and she went right to sleep within like two minutes and from that moment I was completely hooked on it because it was such like a hard thing to know especially in the beginning you don't know are they tired enough to sleep are they overtired how long should they be awake and as your baby grows the wake windows change so a baby that used to be able to stay up for like two hours now can stay up for two hours and 15 minutes or two and a half hours and as they grow it changes the amount of naps change so the huckleberry sweet spot has been so helpful for tracking when to put her down and just keeping us on track especially um, reminding us when it's time to do a nap transition as well so you'll find that there'll be times when the baby is maybe refusing a nap and if you have huckleberry it will tell you to look out for signs that they may be ready to drop a nap as well so all of this is super helpful i found that in the beginning it was overwhelming to try and google all of this stuff because different resources said different things and I don't know what was more accurate, but 
from personal use and experience, I know that Huckleberry is extremely and scarily accurate with the sweet spot. So I just wanted to share my experience with you guys so that you know that this is something I've used and loved for so long and that's why I'm just so excited to share it. And so now I'm gonna do a little app walkthrough and show you guys the features. So basically you open up the app and then you'll see that there are all of the different um, trackers that you can have on your home screen. So for me, you can see there's sleep, feeding, diaper, and then there's pumping, which I never used, medicine, growth, and temperature. Those are on my home screen. And so right now I told you guys that sleep is the one I use the most. So it's right at the top, but I haven't actually tracked her feeding and diapers for a long time, but I'll just show you what it looks like if you want to track a diaper because it is so detailed. So you just click diaper. And then the reason why I also was happy I switched, I had a different tracker before and then I moved to Huckleberry is because this is so detailed. If you click poop or poo, they put, you click poo, you can put the color, the size, the consistency. And this is something that the other apps did not have, or at least the one I was using didn't have this much detail. So you could say like a common one for me would be like large, and yellow and loose that was like or maybe i could even say runny that was like her newborn poop consistency so i'm not gonna actually log it because um that's not what she did i'll just put a p in because she did have a p today so you can put the time when it was i'm gonna say 11 22 oops i'm gonna say 11 it was around 11 30. this morning i changed her diaper and it was a pp and I'll say it was a medium PP, it wasn't that big. And so that's how you use the tracker for that. Um, and you can track all the different things. Um, you can track the growth and everything, but sleep. So you can see at the top, there's something and it says sweet spot at the top. And right now it's telling me that, well, it says nap time, but that actually means bedtime. Um, depending on how you have the settings set up, mine, it, doesn't say bedtime until 7 30 so if the sweet spot recommends something before 7 30 it says nap time but that's okay so you can see it's telling me in four hours and 35 minutes that's the ideal time to put her to bed because she will be tired but not overtired and that is probably the hardest thing to figure out with babies because they're always going through something all these changes in their brain and they're growing and so that's why I think the sweet spot is definitely worth it because it's literally the sweet spot. They are sleepy, but not too tired because every time you wait until they're, if you wait until they're like crying and cranky, they're overtired and you're, you've gone too long. And so I used to do a combination. So I kind of still do this as well where I follow the sweet spot, but I also look for sleepy cues. So Amelia's sleepy cue from when she was a newborn until pretty much now, she still kind of does it, is she'll rub her eyes. So if she's starting to get tired, she'll go like this. And so I kind of watch her physically, but also I watch the sweet spot and I see when the ideal time will be to put her down. So that's how I use the sweet spot. And the other thing is it actually, let me see if it shows. Um, yeah, you can see here, I get notifications every time it wants to let me know that the sweet spot is coming up. It will tell me 10 minutes before so that I can get her to bed. You could change that, I think, so that it's a little bit sooner if you want to have more time to do a bedtime routine and stuff. But I like that it tells, oh no, I think it's 30 minutes. It tells me, it tells me in advance. So then I can be like, oh shoot, we gotta go, we gotta get ready because the last thing you want to do is wait until the sweet spot and then try to like rush to bed. It's not really going to work the same. So you just have to keep in mind when it is. So that is my experience with the app. That is the mini. Oh, I'll show you guys also. They have charts. I love charts as a Virgo. This is like my favorite thing is looking at the charts. You can see the calendar and the averages. This is my calendar and you can see I have been kind of a fanatic so you can see back here there's more on the chart this is when i was tracking her nursing 
and then here in this section this is when i was tracking everything so this is what it looks like when you're like me and you track every little thing that the baby does but for me it's really great i just need this kind of peace of mind and then you get summaries i love the sleep summaries i used to love the feeding summaries as well when i was nursing and when she didn't really eat solids i liked to just be able to see an overview of how much she's eating and see trends and see where maybe there's a growth spurt because she's nursing more than usual so when she's on one of those cluster feeds that was crazy so you guys see the chart here this is the seven day average and you can see her daily total is 11 hours and 50 minutes with 10 hours 22 at night and approximately hour and a half during nap time so that is good for her so those are actually the features of the plus membership so if you have the free version you get the tracking parts but you don't get the sweet spot and honestly the sweet spot is the reason that i like this app so i think it's 100 percent worth it typically the sweet spot i think it costs 9.99 a month but they have a 50% off on their website right now. So I'm gonna leave a link down below where you can go check it out, check out the subscription, see if it's something that you would wanna invest in. I personally think it's worth it, especially if you follow tip number two, which is to shop secondhand and save money so that way you can invest in things like this. I truly believe and stand by this app. I love the sweet spot. Again, like, all those days of being isolated, confused, I don't know what I'm doing, all through the newborn stage, I felt like the sweet spot was like one thing that kind of kept me, it kept me sane because I knew, okay, the nap time is coming soon. I know when my break is, I know when bedtime is. And so I just, I can't recommend it enough. So definitely go down, check my link down below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I personally am so passionate about all of what I talked about today, so I'm just really excited to make this video. And again, thank you to our sponsor, Huckleberry, for sponsoring today's video and letting me fangirl over your app. I really love it. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share with an expecting mama or a new mama out there who can benefit from this information, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!